The conflict in Sudan has entered its fourth month with no end in sight. The fight between the Sudanese military and a rival par paramilitary force has killed thousands. More than three million people fled their homes, and three quarters of a million have migrated to neighboring countries. As William Brangham tells us, the country's West Darfur region is the worst hit, with allegations of war crimes being committed and a grisly discovery last week, a mass grave. A note that some images and accounts in this story are disturbing. In the wind-blown Sahara Desert, refugees from Sudan's war find little shelter. These victims, mostly women and children, are arriving by the thousands, driven from their homes to head across the border into neighboring Chad. These families have fled the brutal violence that's occurring in Sudan's West Darfur region. In the morning, even they attack us, and you know, during they attack us, and in the roads, they took us everything, money, food, clothes, and even they killed, you know, the relatives and the friends, you know. That was a difficult time because they, they did, you know, such horrible things. 23-year-old Huda Hamza is one of 20,000 refugees who arrived at this camp in the past week alone. Safe for now, she worries about her children and their next meal. The most important thing is the security and health and, you know, the, the most important even, you know, the food. Families who have managed to reach this camp in the town of Audre, which is supported by the UN's World Food Program, have survived a deadly journey. Now they must try to rebuild what is left of their lives. In our way to Adere, uh, we come, we find them also like dead bodies, they kill people, those whom were like coming to, uh, to kill people. So they were in the, ro in the road with motorbikes, with like guns and with cars. Darfur in western Sudan is a region the size of Spain. It's been home to deadly violence for over two decades. The current fight stems from a power struggle between two factions of the Sudanese army in the capital of Khartoum. That conflict has reignited attacks in West Darfur, an area where 20 years ago, the Sudanese government and its militias committed genocide against the Darfuri people. Today, it's an offshoot of those same Arab militias, known as the RSF, that are now accused of carrying out targeted killings in the same areas. Researchers from Yale University, working with the U.S. State Department's Sudan Conflict Observatory Program, confirmed that the RSF and its allies have systematically targeted and destroyed 26 communities, towns, and villages in West Darfur. Videos obtained by the NewsHour show how schools that were once shelters have been burned to the ground, mosques have been attacked, and public buildings looted. Sudanese human rights activist Yusuf Abdallah, who sent us these videos, has now fled Darfur and gone to Khartoum, but clearly hasn't escaped the fighting. The, it is in the area which I live now, there's gun fires. I don't know what's happening, but it is like 8 p.m. on, the, on, on Khartoum, but there's a lot of gun fires. Abdallah, like most of those fleeing Darfur, has suffered personally. We lost our family, some of our family, my brother, because even if someone on front of you they, if they had been shot, if you can't help him or her, because there's no way to help. Following reports of widespread war crimes, including mass rapes, the International Criminal Court has now launched an investigation. There's been an overwhelming report of sexual and gender-based violence across the country. Shad Hamu works for Mercy Corps Europe and Sudan. She was based in Khartoum and escaped a week after the conflict began. We've seen that the need for support for these um, sexual-based violence survivors has increased by a million women since the conflict has started. Um, this brings the total up to around four million women who need support post-experiencing sexual and gender-based violence. In some states, we're seeing that there's been a 900% increase in women who need support. This ongoing fighting has exacerbated an already bleak humanitarian crisis in Sudan. 
Nearly 25 million people, more than half the country's population, are in need of some form of humanitarian aid. People are uh, in need for food. We are seeing a food insecurity that is likely to keep on rising as the days go by. Barzil Mwakulomba is the East Africa Emergency Affairs Advisor at the charitable group World Vision. He says reaching those most in need has been the biggest challenge, and many aid workers have died trying. With ongoing conflict, aid workers, over 15 as at now, have died in the line of duty of serving the people of this area. A lot is being put into negotiating access. If there is no ceasefire, it may be difficult for aid workers to be able to do what they are called to do. Repeated ceasefires and peace talks have failed, with both sides refusing to give up their weapons or their fight. Stuck in the middle are the people of Sudan, robbed of their homes and robbed of what was once the hope for a peaceful future. For the PBS NewsHour, I'm William Brangham.